Good morning, Nursing 510 colleagues. This is Joe DiGirolamo. My presentation is on Catherine Kolkaba's Theory of Comfort. Catherine Kolkaba was born and educated in Cleveland, Ohio. She received her nursing diploma at St. Luke's Hospital School of Nursing in 1965. She primarily worked medical surgical units, long-term care facilities, and home health care. In 1987, she received her MSN at Case Western Reserve University and specialized in gerontology. Ten years later, in 1997, she received her PhD at Case Western Reserve University. Currently, she teaches theory to MSN students at the University of Akron and teaches theory to DMP students at Ursuline College. She owns and operates a company called the Comfort Line, which is responsible for implementing the theory of comfort into various healthcare institutions and agencies. Kolkaba published a concept analysis of comfort with her philosopher husband, diagrammed aspects of comfort, operationalized comfort as an outcome of care, contextualized comfort in a middle range theory, and tested the theory in an intervention study. The basic assumptions of the theory of comfort are that A, human beings have a holistic have holistic responses to complex stimuli b comfort is a desirable holistic outcome that is germane to the discipline of nursing and c human beings strive to meet or to have met their basic comfort needs kolkaba defined comfort within the nursing practice as the satisfaction of the basic human needs for relief, ease, or transcendence arising from healthcare situations that are stressful. Types of comfort include relief comfort, which refers to a recipient specific need being met, ease comfort, which refers to a recipient state of calmness or contentment, Transcendence comfort, which refers to a state in which the recipient rises above one's problems or pain. The context of comfort occurs in a physical context, which pertains to bodily sensations, a social context, which pertains to interpersonal relationships, a psycho-spiritual context, which pertains to self-awareness, and in an environmental comp, uh, context which pertains to external surroundings and conditions. Kolkaba's theory of comfort encompasses all aspects of the nursing meta paradigm. The concepts of the nursing meta paradigm, person, environment, health, and nursing, are defined by Catherine Kolkaba as follows. Person refers to those receiving comfort measures such as recipients, patients, students, prisoners, workers, older adults, communities, and institutions. The environment is any aspect of patient, family, or institutional settings that can be manipulated by the nurse, loved one, or the institution to enhance comfort. Health refers to the optimal functioning of the person as defined by the person. And nursing is the intentional assessment of comfort needs, the design of comfort interventions to address those needs, and the reassessment of comfort levels after implementation compared to a baseline. The conceptual framework for Catherine Kolkaba's theory of comfort includes the primary elements of healthcare needs, comfort, nursing interventions, intervening variables, comfort, health-seeking behaviors, institutional integrity, best practices, and best policies. Health care needs are comfort needs arising from stressful health care situations that cannot be met by recipients' traditional support systems. 
Comfort interventions are nursing actions and referrals designed to address specific comfort needs of the recipients, including physiological, social, cultural, financial, psychological, spiritual, environmental, and physical interventions. Intervening variables are interacting forces that influence recipients' perceptions of total comfort. Comfort is the state experienced by recipients of comfort interventions. Health-seeking behaviors compose a broad category of outcomes related to the pursuit of health as defined by the recipient in consultation with the nurse. These behaviors may be internal to the patient, for example, wound healing or improved oxygenation, or external to the patient, such as active participation in rehabilitation exercises, or a peaceful death. Institutional integrity refers to corporations, communities, schools, hospitals, regions, states, and countries possessing, possessing the qualities of being complete, whole, sound, upright, appealing, ethical, and sincere. Best practices refers to the use of healthcare interventions based on evidence to produce the best possible patient and family institutional outcomes. Best policies refer to institutional or regional policies ranging from protocols for procedures and medical conditions to access and delivery of health care. In the comfort theory, Kolkaba asserted that when health care needs of a patient are appropriately assessed and proper nursing interventions carried out to address those needs, taking into account variables intervening in this situation, the outcome is enhanced patient comfort over time. Once comfort is enhanced, the patient is likely, likely to increase health-seeking behaviors. Furthermore, Kolkaba asserted that when a patient experiences health-seeking behaviors, the integrity of the institution is subsequently increased because the increase in health-seeking behaviors will result in improved outcomes. Increased institutional integrity lends itself to the development and implementation of best practices and best policies secondary to the positive outcomes experienced by patients. Recently I had a clinical scenario. A 60-year-old male presents to the emergency department with right lower quadrant pain that radiates to his right lower back. He has a pain rating 7 out of 10 on a 10-point pain rating scale. The patient also is nauseated or was nauseated. His past medical history and surgery only included a repair of a torn right rotator cuff, known drug allergies, amoxicillin. Triage vitals, 158 over 75 was the blood pressure, heart rate 90, respiration rate 20, O2 saturation on room air 98% and a tympanic temperature of 96.8. I immediately established large bore IV access and based on physician orders I administered one liter of normal saline, four milligrams of Zofran for the nausea and four milligrams of morphine for the pain via uh, IV. Labs drawn included a CBC with diff, a CMP, a lactate, and the physician also ordered a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. Based on the CT results, the medical diagnosis was acute appendicitis. Following the, di the immediate diagnosis, I administered IV flagell, IV levofloxacin, and uh, expediently transported the patient to the OR for emergency surgery. The types of comfort for this patient diagnosed with appendicitis required ease comfort, relief comfort, and transcendence comfort across physical, social, psychospiritual, 
an environmental context of comfort. Physically, the patient complained of nausea and right lower quadrant pain radiating to his right lower back. The patient exhibited restlessness and anxiety and was worried about a catering event as he was the owner and operator of a local Italian restaurant. Socially, although his wife and daughter were at bedside, the patient wanted the presence of his brother for emotional support. Psychospiritually, the patient exhibited anxiety and tension as related to his uncertainty about recovery time and, re and required emotional support. Environmentally, the room in the emergency department was small, the stretcher became uncomfortable for the patient, and the patient was attached to IV fluids. The patient felt confined and trapped. The patient needed position changes and freedom of movement. For physical ease, relief, and transcendence comfort, I administered 4 milligrams of Zofran and 4 milligrams of morphine to rid the patient of his nausea and to reduce his right lower quadrant pain. I provided the patient with the opportunity to contact his son and business partner prior to surgery to work out details of a catering event that was to take place one day after surgery. For social ease, relief, and transcendence comfort, I provided the patient with the opportunity to contact his brother. I also allowed his brother in as a visitor at patient's bedside to allow for emotional support of the patient. For psycho-spiritual ease, relief, and transcendence comfort, I requested the surgical resident and the OR circulating nurse speak with the patient and provide additional emotional support by addressing the patient's anxiety and tension regarding his uncertainty about the procedure and recovery time. For environmental ease, relief, and transcendence, transcendence comfort, I repositioned the patient from laying to sitting positions on the stretcher with frequency to address the patient's need for position change, and I assisted the patient to a nearby restroom on several occasions to address the patient's need for freedom of movement. Advantages of comfort theory in practice as outlined by Lichten, Berg, Hurd, Hartman, Beale, and Bouchard are as follows. Comfort is a universal language and can be understood by anyone. It articulates what, what's already been done in healthcare. It provides direction for quality improvement. It includes clinical practice guidelines. It addresses the comfort of nurses, nurse managers, and executives. It provides a holistic outcome of comfort for patients, families, and staff. There are protocols to assess nurses' comfort. It even has direct correlation with the initiatives of the American Association of Critical Care Nurses and the Joint Commission. Furthermore, there's a continuing education course available online for nurses. This concludes my presentation on Catherine Kolkeba's theory of comfort. Should you have any questions or comments, please respond via the discussion forum. I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening.